Hi, this is Sam Botstein from MachineSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our tutorials, and check us out at MachineSkills.com for all of our tutorials, courses, presets, and sounds. In previous tutorials, we've taken a look at many of the capabilities of Machine Sampler. We've looked at ways to truncate, time stretch, reverse, and slice different sounds. But today, we're going to look at how to map samples across the velocity range. This is an excellent technique for live finger drumming, for creating very natural dynamics, and creating realistic, deeply sampled sounds. In the Machine Factory Library, there are a number of deeply sampled kits and sounds, especially those from the Abbey Road collection. In the examples today, I'm going to use the Abbey Road 50s Autumn Kit. It's very difficult to demonstrate subtle differences in velocity performance, even with a camera pointed at the machine hardware. So what I've done is I've created this silly little pattern which essentially plays a velocity of 8, then 16, 24, 32, and so on, counting up by 8 until the top of the velocity range. This way we can hear how the machine sampler is actually working and giving us the results that we're looking for. Right off the bat, we'll notice on this Abbey Road kit that when I play softer, we'll actually not only hear a softer sound with a lower volume, but we'll actually hear a different sample playing. So if we hear these velocity settings, you know, from 8, 16, and on, we'll actually hear how this is being accomplished. It sounds pretty realistic to me. The way that this is being accomplished is within the sampler, in the zone page, we'll actually see that different samples are mapped to different parts of the velocity range. Now, before we go further, I just want to note two things in this view on this kick pad. The top sample is actually quite a bit longer than the bottom sample, so we have a 1.74 second sample up here, and only a 1.21 second sample here. You can put any kind of samples of any length on any part of the zone. So, for example, we could have this sample only mapped to different parts of the keyboard range, or we could have it mapped to different parts of the velocity range, and everywhere in between. We could even select all of these and then click Map as Drum Kit, so each individual key on the piano or pad on machine in the keyboard mode would play a different sample. If we just step back though, we'll notice that when we play with different velocities, it'll actually select the different samples for us. So if I play as soft as I can, we'll get this bottom sample selected, and if I play as hard as I can, we'll get the top sample selected. This behavior isn't carried out into the machine sequencer, so if we actually play this pattern, we'll see that it does not select the samples for us. So in this case, we'll actually have to use our ears to hear which sample is being heard. One very important note is to check out the machine preferences. In the hardware pane of the preferences, we'll actually see that there's a sensitivity setting and a velocity scaling setting. The sensitivity is very important. I always use the sensitivity turned all the way up so that I can play very quietly and get responses, even with the full velocity response on. And I usually play with linear velocity scaling, although there are seven options. With a linear scale, what you play is what you get. So if you play with a velocity of 24, machine will record and play a velocity of 24. If you play with a velocity of 100, you will get a velocity of 100. These other settings are essentially curved as opposed to being linear. Soft is more of a logarithmic curve, and hard is a more exponential curve. 1, 2, and 3 refer to essentially how curved they are as compared to linear. So a soft 3 curve will be very logarithmic or concave, and a hard 3 velocity curve will be very exponential or very convex. I also want to note that when playing in MIDI mode, we actually have the opportunity to use these various velocity scales as well. If we look in the controller editor, 
each individual template can have a set, separate pad velocity curve. So by default, if you just make a new template, it's going to have a linear curve, but you can set it to whatever you would like. But some of the uh, factory templates actually have curves associated with them. So the Ableton Live 9 factory template has this host transport control turned on by default, but also uses the soft 3 velocity curve by default. So try drumming with the various different velocity curves. I find that linear is a pretty good one, but you know, for some performance situations, I'll actually turn it to soft or hard scaling. If we take a look at some of the other samples on this Abbey Road kit, we'll hear that um, the sounds are even more dramatically different. In the snare, when we play as softly as we can, it almost sounds like a side stick sound. And if we play as loud as we can, we hear just a lot of reverb and echo. So let's just hear the sequence. Once again, we'll notice that the samples are not mapped linearly. They take up more of the velocity range at the bottom and less at the top, and they're longer at the top than they are at the bottom. When playing real drums, I like to be able to ride or crash the, the various cymbals. And so if we look at the ride cymbal here, you can actually do this with this Abbey Road ride sound. At the bottom of the velocity range, it's very much like a soft kind of jazzy ride sound, but at the top it's a really big crash. Listen to that decay. Here we'll notice that we have the same kind of non-linear mapping, but at the bottom we have about a we have about a two second sample and at the top we have a sample that's ten seconds long. This is a really powerful thing. Uh, you don't necessarily need this many samples to accomplish a cymbal sound that you can either ride or crash with. So all the realism that we're hearing is actually coming from the number of samples that are mapped across the velocity range. And there isn't really a good substitute for this. We'll notice that in this last page of the sampler settings, the velocity slash module page, that the volume destination is turned all the way down to zero. And this is because we're getting a lot of the dynamics we're looking for from the actual individual samples. But we'll notice, um, when we try to make one of these of our own, that we're not going to be able to get the same degree of realism without this number of samples, and that we're not going to um, get the volume differences without using this velocity volume destination. So what I've done here is I've copied this pattern and kit and I've just dragged one of our samples from our expansion Liquid House, which is available at machineskills.com, onto this first kick sound here. Now, right away, we're going to notice that it's not going to have the velocity response that we expected. What we're hearing is the same volume regardless of velocity. However, we're able to simply turn up this velocity destination control and it'll, it'll respond the way that you would expect. Interestingly, a lot of these knobs that you see in the machine software will default to their default position if you double click them. So if we have this turned up to 100 and double click it, it's back to 12 o'clock or 0%. Um, but for the velocity destination volume here, they've actually made the default 100. Um, this is one really nice detail that NI has baked into the Machine 2 software. One interesting note here is that you can actually reverse this. So here we have the volume destination at negative 100%. So when we have the lowest velocities, it's going to be the loudest, and vice versa. This is one of the ways that Machine 2 does not limit you in terms of sound design. We're going to leave this up at 100 for now, but it could be useful, for example, to use some value between 0 and 100 if, say, the bottom of the velocity range is not being heard. For this demonstration, though, we're going to leave it at 100%. 
So in order to get the deeply sampled response that we were using before, we're going to go into this zone page of the sampler. In Liquid House, um, once again, every single sound has a dry and an affected version. So here we have a dry version of the kick and a distorted version of the kick. So in order to demonstrate how to evenly map a sound so that it transitions between a dry version and a distorted version, or you know any two similar samples, I'm just going to use this Sauce Kick 2 from Liquid House and its distorted brother. And I already have the uh, Sauce Kick 2 on um, the entire velocity range, just the way that Machine maps it by default if you just drag it onto one of the pads. But I'm going to add the distorted version. And you'll notice that if you drag your mouse to the bottom of the screen, it's going to map it to an individual note. And if you drag it towards the top of the screen, it's going to um, put it across the entire range, which is what we want here. Uh, unfortunately, it put it across the entire velocity range, which is not what we want. So let's just bring down um, the original sample to 100 and bring up the distorted sample to um, start at 100. So here, um, the original sample will play between velocities of 0 and 100, and the distorted version will play between velocities of 100 and 127. Once again, we're going to um, have the velocity destination to volume set all the way up so that we get a nice even dynamic response. So two things happened there. I didn't have the track soloed at the beginning, but more importantly, at the end there, um, we heard a sort of chipmunked, squeaky high version. Everything looks to be right, so what's going on there? The answer is that by default, Machine will shoot the root key of a sample that you add this way down to C negative two. So if we just raise that to uh, MIDI note 60, or C3, we'll get a much more natural response, sort of like the response I was expecting. Now, um, that isn't as natural as the various Abbey Road sounds that we're working with, simply because we don't have that many different samples. However, we can do some things to make the transition sound a little more natural. For one thing, it looks like the distorted version is just a lot louder than the um, dry version. So what we can do is we can use this gain control here and bring it down. Um, I'm going to guess that about 9 dB will give us a much more natural um, response. In order to get a very clean sound with only two samples, or perhaps three samples, um, it takes a little bit of tweaking to get it to sound uh, very natural across this kind of pattern or the entire velocity range. Some things that you could try are overlapping the samples. Um, of course, it'll be louder when both samples are playing. Um, I don't recommend leaving any gaps in terms of the sample mapping, because if you play in this range here, you won't hear any samples. Um, it's also a good idea to try playing with these other velocity destination controls. And finally, um, the best way to get a realistic response across the velocity range is, once again, to have more samples. So there's a lot that you can do here. You have a lot of access to the controls with all of the machine samplers options. But at the end of the day, the best way to get a deeply sampled sound is to use more samples or to use as many tricks as you can in terms of um, the machine sampler and to just tweak until it gets the dynamic response that you're looking for. Make sure to follow us at machineskills.com. If you sign up now, you'll get a free copy of Liquid House. And check us out at ADSR Tutorials on YouTube for all our tutorials.